One standing in a pool of moody backstage lighting, Cherise Granger drew her t-shirt slowly over her head, revealing a shining white satin bra, the kind with detachable straps and tiny lace trimmings around the cups. She paused a moment to shake out her strawberry blonde hair and moisten her full, crimson lips, stealing a glance at the mirror. A tall, delicately built young woman with alabaster flesh and liquid blue eyes looked back. Hanging her t-shirt over a nearby chair, Cherise began to unbuckle the belt of her stonewashed jeans, listening to the restless murmur of the Friday night crowd. The Palais Royale was perhaps the most popular adult venue in the Red Zone, the main bar would be swarming with nightlife by ten. In less than fifteen minutes, the lingerie parade would begin, and Cherise would be sent out along the catwalk wearing little more than a whisper and a promise. She was almost feverish with anticipation. Cherise had been working at the Palais for just over two months now, and still felt a little nervous before every show. Barely eighteen, she had little experience modeling outside a couple of down-home mannequin parades and amateur reviews, and certainly not in her bra and panties, such activities had been confined largely to her bedroom. By contrast, the Palais was a place of satin radiance and neon ecstasy. Stepping on stage in her impossibly tall stilettos, she felt a wonderful shiver of embarrassment fill her trim, firm tummy. She was young, she was beautiful, and the questionable nature of the entertainment made her delirious with excitement. There was, of course, another reason for her tremblingly pleasant anxiety. Adjusting a wayward bra strap, she began unbuttoning her jeans, progressively revealing the lacy tops of her high-cut white briefs. In a matter of minutes, every inch of those skin-tight liquor panties would be visible to every person in the bar. She could feel a subtle flush rising to her cheeks, tinting her flesh with a warm, carnation glow. What am I doing here, she thought, working the levis slowly over her hips, enjoying the gently sinuous movement of denim down her thighs. Peeling her jeans down to the floor, she stepped lightly out of them, brushing her hair back from her face. Her snowy white panties shimmered with a satiny radiance as she walked barefoot across to the clothing rack. Gleaming like quicksilver, they seemed to have been airbrushed onto her body, filming her hips like a second skin. Her fingers played with the elegant French lace trim encircling the waistband, touching that sheer strip of floral gossamer made her ache with longing. She wanted to be out on stage as soon as possible, her long, slender legs absolutely bare, her lingerie on display to half the town. What am I doing here? Cherise asked herself again, running her hands down the length of her torso. How could she explain the sultry, breathless desire to place her underpants on full inspection for a room full of faceless strangers? She might have spent years wading through the mountain of literature devoted to her unique psychology, indeed, she'd started already, but her reasons were deceptively simple in the final analysis, parading her underthings made her feel beautiful. Voguing across the catwalk in her scanties was an experience both thrilling and sensual, her state of disabile always made her feel gloriously feminine. Having recently turned 18, she loved wearing pretty lingerie, and the opportunity to reveal her flimsies beyond her bedroom rarely presented itself under normal circumstances. The panty shows appealed to her sense of fun, like all teenaged girls, Cherise enjoyed testing the limits. Cherise was young, pretty, and she enjoyed parading around in her bra and panties. It was as simple as that. True, the money was good, but it wasn't her primary motivation for working at the Palais, Cherise would have been perfectly willing to do it for free. She wasn't even particularly concerned about the style of lingerie she wore, just so long as it made her feel unleggy and lovely and unforgivably naughty. In short, wearing lingerie made her feel like a girl. Two, she'd been amazingly lucky. Few would have described it as luck, but it had been luck nonetheless, luck of a type relevant only to Cherise herself, fortune of a magnitude that only she could truly appreciate. 
How many of her kind were born with a face which spanned the gulf between the male and the female so perfectly? A body so completely androgynous, poised at the very cusp of human gender, needing only the barest hormonal nudge towards the feminine? Not many, she'd come to realize since she'd left home 28 months before. Her transition had been crystal smooth, the drift of a feather through some flawlessly blue sky. She'd begun her metamorphosis shortly after her 16th birthday, back when she had been a he. A boy. A boy with tiny wrists and huge misty eyes and a voice like fine autumn rain. Missing his cue and entering the stage too late for puberty, he was constantly mistaken for a girl, a delicate, ivory tomboy attempting to hide her femininity behind short hair and Nike runners and those ungainly black duffel coats so popular a few years ago. She'd known, even then. In a way, she'd always known, her earliest childhood memories involved aprons and lace and bright yellow ribbons, the innocent, dawning fantasies of a transgender child. The knowledge had been abstract and hazy, like the blurring lens of an unfocused camera, but the understanding had been there all along. Over the years, it had grown into a certainty, a conviction profound enough to bring about the reconstruction her body, her identity, and ultimately, her entire being. All set in motion by a single sentence, uttered at the age of five, I'm really a girl. Three backstage traffic was always relatively heavy Friday nights, waiters, barhands and security staff passed through the changing area in an endless stream. Makeup, dressing tables and clothing racks had been provided for the girls, but their employers saw no need for privacy. Girls who modeled their underpants for a living had no use for dressing rooms, as far as the management was concerned. Cherise glanced self-consciously around the changing area. Beautiful young girls were disrobing all around her, slipping out of blouses, stepping out of skirts and frocks. Not a single one over the age of 19, they walked about in their prettiest underwear carefully oblivious of the activity around them. She often wondered about genetic girls. Did they feel that indescribable silken thrill that preceded clipping a suspender belt around a tiny waist? Did they enjoy the same moist, gasping fantasies she experienced whenever she slipped a wisp of black denier along her thigh? Cherise believed there was nothing more sensual than stepping into a pair of boar stockings, feeling the silk whisper along her cool, marble-smooth skin. She hung her jeans over a hanger on the clothing rack, then wandered back to her table to check her costume, such as it was, for the evening. The show was about to begin, all around the changing area, the other girls were adding last-minute touches to their makeup, fourteen achingly pretty young women stripped to their bare knickers, bending over their mirrors and displaying their lush, ripe bottoms to the world. Cherise joined them, pausing to step into her glistening black stilettos. Heels were absolutely essential to the job. No girl was permitted to set foot on stage without them. High heels to gave her legs that sexy, tapering appearance the patrons admired so much. She turned her back to one of the full-length mirrors, appraising her curvaceous figure, eyes narrowed self-critically. She stood with her hands on hips, looking back over her shoulder, shifting her weight from foot to foot. The stilettos were the only outerwear she was allowed during the performance, ironic that they could add so much to her innate feminine sensuality. The parade catered to a diverse range of tastes, in the first ten minutes of the performance, the audience would be treated to expensive Italian corsetry, high-class Victoria's Secrets, outrageously frilly petite culottes a la Francais, even good old-fashioned Playtex cross your hearts. And that was just the warm-up. Cherise's personal favorite was the girl-next-door sequence of the program, with its adorable selection of full briefs, control panties and plain, pretty lycra, the comfortable, sensible underthings that women wore in their everyday lives. She loved walking on stage flashing her underwires and cottontails, the very same undies she might have worn while shopping out at Chamberlain Plaza or buying a cheeseburger at McDonald's. She couldn't explain it, maybe she just felt more accessible striding the catwalk in her nylon hipsters. 
Clicking back to her table, Cherise gave her face a final check, tinting her cheeks with a soft carnation glow. She'd need a dab of powder before she stepped out into the spotlights. Just enough to take the edge off her breathless, rosy blush. Like most of the girls here, Cherise favored the natural look. Not that she needed too much sugar frosting at the best of times, her complexion was as close to perfection as her innate biology, and her daily estrogen supplement could provide. 4. Cherise just had finished her final preparations when the stage assistant bustled into the dressing alcove, calling for the girl's attention. All right, ladies, time to go, he babbled in his thick Gaelic brogue, everybody take your places, please. A burst of excited chatter followed this announcement as the girls deserted their dressing tables and flocked towards the grande stage. The atmosphere was tense with expectation. Tonight, they'd be doing things differently, tonight was going to be special. The management had decided to spice up the festivities with a change to their normal routine. Each girl would enter the stage fully dressed and exit in nothing but her high heels and stilettos. It would still be a lingerie parade, complete with a trip down the runway into the audience, but their skimpy little underwears would come off over the course of the entire evening. It would be an extra treat for the audience, an unexpected thrill for the male contingent. Cherie slipped quietly into the leggy throng, heart slamming into overdrive. Her body seemed to tingle with a kind of frigid heat, the way it always did before the show began. Out in the auditorium, ambient noise gave way to rising cheers of the crowd. Glaring spotlights dazzled her eyes, and Cherise had to bite her lip to rein in her excitement. In a matter of minutes, she would be standing on open display with only a flimsy pair of satin knickers to hide behind. 5. Contrary to popular belief, a classic spectacle erotique requires far more than walking around half-naked. There were certain protocols to follow, procedures to be observed. Fortunately, Cherise had committed all of them to memory. First, the girls would line up on the stage, resplendent in their svelte black minis, sheer midnight stockings and six-inch stilettos. With their hair professionally styled, they'd be the very definition of elegance, as befitted the occasion. Of course, looking beautiful was only half the job. The rest involved taking their clothes off, one piece at a time. And that was nowhere as easy as it first appeared. At the beginning of the set, each of the girls had to walk down the catwalk where they would shed all of their inhibitions, first an earring, then a brooch, then a deliciously long black glove. Next, they discarding their outer clothing, placing their tantalizing figures on public display. Only this time, they'd be taking it one step further, everything had to go, corsets, suspenders and bustiers would be cast aside with barely a second glance. By the end of the session, they'd be left standing in nothing but their high-cut lace panties. In short, the whole affair was a thinly veiled excuse to strip a group of pretty young girls down to their bare essentials. Once the bras came off and the breasts were bared, they would gather up their clothes and tiptoe backstage to prepare for the second set, where the entire process would begin all over again. Standing backstage amongst her twittering co-workers, Cherise felt her pulse quicken with a mixture of outrage and expectation. It was the most gratuitous exploitation she could imagine. And she could hardly wait to get started. 6. Okay. Cherise, you're up next. Cherise felt a light hand slap her bottom. A few of the other girls giggled as she stepped forward. It was mild, good-natured laughter, most of them knew how embarrassing she found these public spectacles. The dice had been cast, the moment was nigh. Too late to back out now. The laughter was drowned out by a welter of applause as she strutted onto the catwalk. A stunning young girl with porcelain skin and blue eyes, Cherise was literal showstopper. Walking with a graceful, feline stride, her stilettos clopped loudly on the polished wooden floorboards. 
there was an art to walking in high heels, an art very few women ever truly mastered. Cherise was one of the very few. Reaching back over her shoulders to loosen her zip, she arched her spine and thrust her belly gently forward. The applause began to escalate as she drew the zipper slowly down the length of her back, they'd been waiting to see this all night. And this was only the first step. Before the night was over, she would be almost completely naked, her bra, suspenders and stockings strewn in casual disarray around the floor. Flashing the audience a brilliant smile, Cherie slipped the dress off her shoulders, lowering the hem slowly to her waist. The view was literally breathtaking. The shiny satin brassiere adhered to her body by some force unknown to modern science, her breasts were absolutely magnificent, barely constrained by the cups. Cherise continued to lower the mini, exposing more of her pristine white underwear. Blushing from toe to hairline, she shimmied the tight material over her wide, curvaceous hips. Her face approximated the hue of an autumn sunset. She was struggling with sheer, helpless embarrassment. She bit her lip to hold back the giggles, knowing that once she began, she'd never be able to stop. Stepping carefully out of the dress, she straightened up to allow everyone a heart-stopping eyeful of her lingerie. She'd chosen to wear a virginal white ensemble beneath the black mini, it was her prettiest outfit, and she'd known it would be an added surprise for the crowd. Her high-cut g-string panties shimmered like quicksilver against her lightly tanned flesh. They glimmered beneath the bar's glaring fluorescence, soft blue shadows flowed across the glistening material whenever she moved her hips. The garter belt and stockings had been inevitable, she'd been given no choice in the matter. The Palais had a long association with exotic corsetry. Literally every show featured dozens of college girls in suspender stockings, proudly displaying their long, tapering legs for the patrons. It was practically law, all of them were required to wear frilly little garter belts beneath their clothing. No panty hose, and no thigh socks, and definitely no leg warmers. Garters were an absolutely necessity, no exceptions to the rule. Beautiful women should always wear exciting lingerie, and suspenders added that touch of sophistication that the Paulette crowd would be expecting. This evening, Cherise had selected an intricately designed bridal number, a magical wisp of lycra, lace, and liquid satin. It somehow appeared both decadent and demure, the kind of thing worn by a virgin on her wedding night. Long, white, adjustable garters were clearly visible below her underpants, clipped up to sheer midnight stockings at mid-thigh. Feeling indescribably naughty, she reached down to tug gently at one of the reinforced black tops. The cheering escalated to a roar. There were few things as truly captivating as the sight of a pretty girl adjusting her hosiery. Cherie straightened up, planting a hand on her hip and shifting her weight to her left heel. As a final treat for her howling admirers, Cherise put a hand to the back of her neck, removing a clasp and letting out her glorious mass of platinum hair. A blonde avalanche swept down her shoulders, the luxurious, wavy tresses trailing to her hips. Flash bulbs exploded all around her as the paparazzi seized the moment, Cherise was almost caught by surprise, local papers and lads' magazines frequently traded photo shoots for free advertising. This time next week, her panty-clad figure would be gracing the pages of Pix Magazine and Chamberlain View. Raising her right hand to her rosebud mouth, Cherise saluted the crowd with a 1940s air kiss, then turned on her left heel and walked further down the runway, her luscious young bottom turning cute little circles in its glistening satin sheath. Her suspenders stretched and shortened along her thighs, matching tempo with each clicking step. 7. Cherie suppressed an almost irresistible impulse to cover her cleavage. In a few moments, she would discard her flimsy white suspender belt. The mounting tension was all but excruciating, paradoxically, she was no stranger to this kind of disabile, she'd modeled swimwear several times over past year or so. 
Of course, there was a vast difference between a two-piece bikini and a matching set of intimates. OMG, this was so embarrassing. Standing before the mob in her glimmering white underwear, Cherise felt small and naked and unspeakably feminine. Her tummy seemed to be swarming with tiny, tickling fingers, the audience fell silent as she bent from the hips and unclipped her suspenders one teasing clasp at a time. Her heart skipped a beat as she felt the hooks give at the back of her garter belt, releasing her waist from its silken restraints. Moistening her lips with a flickering pink tongue, Cherise arched her back and removed the belt with sensitive, precise fingers. Palming elastic with her left hand, she slipped the garment off her body in a single deft movement. There was not an instant's hesitation in the maneuver, she had months of practice to hone her technique. Slinging the garter belt over her shoulder with saucy precision, she turned back down the catwalk as the crowd roared their appreciation. 8. Cherise posed on the runway with her cleavage thrust into the air. An odd, nervous tension fell over her as she waited her turn. Technicolor visions danced gaily through her pretty head, closing her eyes, she could see herself modeling her bare panties before the entire barroom. The moment she dreaded so much was rapidly approaching, it was almost time to fulfill her exhibitionistic responsibilities. She was practically trembling with anticipation. She'd been given no choice in the matter, the bearing of the breasts was an absolute necessity. Refusal was out of the question, nobody argued with the polem management. It was grossly unfair of course, but the administration had been most specific on this issue. Sweeping her gaze the across the bar, Cherise walked sleekly down the middle of the runway. She reached back and unhooked her satiny white underwire, allowing the shoulder straps to glide loosely off her shoulders. There was always an instant of speechless, shivering tension whenever she took off her bra in public. She was a large, busted girl possessing a Jane Mansfield figure a regular decup delight was how the resident barflies often described her. Her lush, enormous breasts bounced and lolled as she removed the tight, satiny constraints. Cherise was almost dizzy with arousal. She felt utterly vulnerable, completely subject to the voyeuristic whims of the wildly cheering audience. Her first impulse was to place her fingertips over the dark, sensitive tips of her nipples, but she paused in the act, allowing the crowd a generous view of her assets. Her hands twitched nervously as she tried to decide where to place them. She was blushing all the way to her hairline by now. A storm of approval burst forth from the audience, literally shaking the rafters in their enthusiasm. Whistles and catcalls reverberated across the room, glasses clattered on tabletops as heavy boothials stomped the polished floorboards. Tingling in near ecstasy, Cherise finally covered her hard, pointed nipples, teasing them gently between her splayed fingers. A dozen flash bulbs flared simultaneously, the crowd gaped in wordless appreciation. If there was one more captivating than a beautiful teenaged girl adjusting her hosiery, it was the sight of one trying to hide her breasts from public exposure and not quite succeeding. 9. With that, the opening session was brought to a close. Two more were scheduled over the next four hours, and Cherise wondered if she would survive the ongoing humiliation. 10. If the evening's revenues were anything to go by, the lingerie show had been an overwhelming success. The administration had been pleased enough with the final earnings to hand out a healthy £50 bonus with the standard pay packet. Like all of the Polem modeling staff, Cherise was paid in cash, allowing the club to avoid certain financial inconveniences, such as healthcare and pension plans. She'd been getting changed backstage when one of the barhands came round with the money, clearly dumbstruck by the presence of all those bras, panties and smooth, naked tummies. Cherise concealed her share in the depths of her shoulder bag, then slipped back into her jeans and t-shirt. She always said she would have stripped for free, but there was no denying the satisfaction of having a little extra to burn. With tips from the clientele, she might rake in close to 500 pounds this weekend. 
Cherise gave her hair a quick brush then gathered up her belongings. It was long past midnight, and her friends were beginning to drift off in murmuring groups. Two of them offered her a lift home, but she politely declined, saying she could take a taxi. Really? It'll be no trouble, Cherise. No, I'll be fine, thanks. I live in the opposite direction, anyway. It wasn't an outright deception. She'd always lived in the opposite direction, as long as she could remember. That was one of the downsides to being a transy. She could walk the same paths chosen by many genetic girls, but never take a parallel course. Truth be told, she couldn't afford to. The Pala wasn't some cheap backstreet clip joint. It was a five-star venue with a reputation to uphold. She'd lose her job if her secret was discovered. The repercussions would be catastrophic, she could easily find herself blacklisted by every club in the red zone. Cherise had no intention of ever letting that happen. This job was the fulfillment of all her deepest fantasies. She'd been all of seven years old the first time she'd performed a striptease before her bedroom mirror. Some might reason this was nothing unusual, most little girls stripped in the mirror at one point or another. The problem was, of course, that Cherise had been a boy at the time. An extremely pretty one, no argument there, but a boy nonetheless. And the world wasn't particularly kind to children of any description, especially those who yearned for something totally unacceptable. No matter, that was the past long buried if not forgotten. She'd weathered the storms of anger and prejudice for close on thirteen years, finally coming to accept herself, which was the only thing that truly mattered. It was probably why she was able to pass so well. In the two months she'd worked at the Palais, nobody had suspected she was anything other than biologically female, not even the girls who shared her dressing table. That was something of a miracle, considering how often she'd stood nude amidst the naked, so to speak. Cherise hoisted her shoulder bag and started towards the exit. The general hubbub was dying down as the girls left the alcove, but the main topic of conversation hung stubbornly in the air. Apparently, the management had been impressed by audience's reaction to this evening's strip parade impressed enough to make it a regular event, as a matter of fact. The rumor mill was already operating at full capacity, if the punters had their way, the girls might be required to go topless from next week on. What would they demand next? Pole sliding? Lap dancing? Nude shows? That might conceivably present a few problems, if she hadn't been born a transy. Yes, like many children born in the Cortland Valley, she'd been diagnosed with TISM, the so-called transsexual plague that had featured so prominently in the news of late. Her gradual transition from male to female had been the most harrowing experience of her life, starting at the age of seven and ending shortly before her tenth birthday. It had taken three years— 36 months of physical and psychological torment as her genetic structure was completely rewritten and all traces of masculinity erased from her body. At the time, it had been an ordeal of pain and doubt and fear, the kind that no child should ever experience. But in the end, Cherise had emerged anatomically female. Nobody outside of the medical profession could have seen the difference, and then only after extensive physical examination. To all intents and purposes, Cherise Granger was a woman. Eleven, she exited the building via one of the staff entrances, then made her way round to Royal Avenue to hail a cab. A faint plume of mist curled from her lips, the air outside was cooler than she recalled. She glanced up and down the road, wishing she'd brought a sweater. It was nearly three a.m., the street all but deserted. Above and behind her, the Palen neon signs strobed away in silence. The music had ended hours ago, leaving the club empty and spectral the pre-dawn gloom. What am I doing here? 
Cherise asked herself for the thousandth time. Why had she run away from her life back in Ridgewick, severing all of her closest ties with barely a backward glance? She'd known fortune so often she'd lost track, but had also paid a tremendous price to satisfy her desires. Her parents had become remote, distant strangers. Her mother refused to even take her calls. Had it been worthwhile? All the sacrifice, all the pain, all the loss? Sometimes, just sometimes, she thought yes. Lights were approaching from east. Cherise raised a hand to signal the driver, then stood by patiently as the taxi pulled over beside her. Cherise opened the rear passenger door, settling into the back seat with a weary sigh. Felt like she'd been on her feet since last Thursday. So, where are you going then, love? The cabbie asked. He was a large, stocky man with twinkling eyes and pink, jovial features, the kind of face Cherise associated with elderly, good-natured tradesmen. Lamington Terrace, please. She replied, making herself more comfortable. That over by Coronation Drive? Yes, that's the one. All right, then. Blinkers flashing through the fog, the taxi pulled away from the curb, gradually accelerating along Royal Avenue. The lights of the Palais faded behind them. So you work at that club? The driver inquired, glancing in the rear view. Yes, I do. Oh, the old man raised his eyebrows somewhat humorously, and what do you do there? Cherise granted him a small but extremely cheeky smile. Walk around in my bra and panties. The cabbie considered this answer thoughtfully, then replied, Sounds like my missus in summer. Don't suppose they have any vacancies? Cherise laughed, feeling the pressures and frustrations of the previous night's escapades draining out of her. The cabbie joined in, chuckling under his breath as he switched gears. The taxi turned left at Crown and vanished into the chill morning air.